It's Monday, December 2nd. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blancolirio channel. It's Cyber Monday. And today we're going to talk about bad weather, bad weather and aviation in light of a couple of high profile accidents that have hit the news recently. But first, let me give you a quick Northern California update as things have changed dramatically here at headquarters. Remember earlier this month, we started out with uh, high pressure off the Pacific coast that led to high temperatures, war very warm temperatures, unseasonably warm temperatures, and an extension of the fire season here in Northern California. That was followed a couple of days ago by a <laughs> bomb cyclone, better known as a good snowstorm, that dumped 14 inches of snow here at the 3,200 foot elevation. That's when that high pressure just backed up off enough to let that cold air sink down here and hit us. Now that back, that high pressure is backed up far enough to allow what's called an atmospheric river or a lot of rain event come to California here and has replaced, has melted nearly, nearly all of the 14 inches of snow in a matter of days and filled the rain gauge up with four and a half inches of rain. Despite all that precipitation, only localized flooding has occurred as we're now just now getting our watershed saturated the soil in the watersheds saturated enough to begin flowing and filling up the reservoirs here in northern california so today we're going to discuss some of the things that get pilots in trouble when dealing with bad weather especially in the light of two high profile crashes that have been in the media this last week on wednesday the 27th of november a cherokee six crashed it on while attempting to land at night in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. The weather was described as dark, rainy, windy, and foggy. A pilot with three years flying experience in his fairly newly acquired Cherokee 6, he's known it for about a year, went in while attempting to land in Kingston, Ontario at a fairly steep angle. There were seven family members on board and no survivors. And then on Saturday, 30 November, a prominent family from Idaho Falls, Idaho, lost nine members of that family, 12 folks on board, a Pilatus PC-12 single-engine turboprop aircraft while on departure from Chamberlain, South Dakota, while out visiting the area for a hunting trip. So let's talk today about some of the general problems that pilots typically encounter when dealing with bad weather. Unfortunately, this story happens nearly every year, oftentimes quite locally here as pilot as the Sierra Nevada mountains continues to claim pilots every year that push it in the weather. What's the old saying? Judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. So investigators will be investigating these crashes and will be sorting out to see if there was any mechanical malfunctions that exacerbated these crashes but nine times out of ten they're gonna find out that these weather related crashes are pilot error typically pilots getting in over their heads with the local weather conditions there's many ways to get in trouble with the weather one of the most common is VFR flight continued VFR flight into instrument meteorological conditions. You're a VFR pilot, uh, you're not an instrument rated pilot, you're flying use, using visual clues, visual rules, and you push this flight right into the bad weather, into the clouds, you're not instrument rated, you get disoriented, you end up crashing. Continued VFR flight into IMC conditions will often push a pilot down into something called scud running. We've all been guilty of scud running or some of us are used to low level flying and then we add in the weather to it and then you end up colliding with the terrain as you're flying too low to avoid the weather to avoid getting disoriented in the clouds in your vfr aircraft uh, and end up impacting the terrain scud running claims pilots every year severe and extreme turbulence causing loss of control of the aircraft or um, structural failure of the aircraft that's a pretty rare occurrence more much more frequently 
encountered than turbulence is icing conditions, severe icing conditions that can overwhelm an aircraft with de-icing or anti-icing capability. This is something investigators are going to be looking at specifically on the PC-12 accident as it sounds like that aircraft was operating in conditions of freezing precipitation. So today I want to talk about more about the hazards of freezing precipitation and why this is such a problem for airplanes. The FAA defines icing conditions in three different levels, light, moderate, and severe. Severe icing is when the icing conditions exceed your ability to de-ice or anti-ice your aircraft. Now, not all aircraft have de-icing or anti-icing capability. The light aircraft that I was describing earlier, flying VFR into bad weather, most light aircraft typically have no de-icing capability at all. If in the event that you fly your light aircraft with no de-icing capability at all into the mountains into freezing precipitation where the freezing level is lower than the mountaintops, you're doomed. You've just created yourself your own emergency. If you get into freezing precipitation in that situation, the only way out is to descend to warmer air. If that descent takes you into the mountains, game over. About 20% of general aviation accidents are weather related. Both of these accidents were operated under part FAR part 91 general aviation. Aircraft that do have anti-icing or de-icing capability come in two different flavors. Anti-icing anti systems or de-icing systems. Most airliner type aircraft have anti-icing systems. That's where you blow warm bleed air over the through the inside of the leading edges of the wings and portions of the tail of the aircraft to warm those surfaces up above freezing and melt any precipitation that lands on the leading edge of the wings. Airliners have an, another advantage in that they've got excess power and they're climbing to high flight levels well above the weather. They're generally in and out and through the weather before it can become a big problem. Smaller type aircraft, turboprop type aircraft, Pilatus type PC-12 aircraft, for example, tend to reside more in the lower flying levels that puts you right in the middle of icing conditions. Often these turboprop type aircraft have de-icing equipment on board the aircraft. That's typically a Goodyear rubber boot that's mounted over the leading edge of a wing, and this rubber boot de-icing you wait until the icing builds up on the leading edge of the wing, you hit the button and you inflate the boot, the boot inflates on the leading edge of the wing, it busts up the ice and the ice flies off over the wing. Typically it works great under light and up to moderate icing conditions. However, if you encounter severe icing conditions or even worse than severe is freezing precipitation you are exceeding the certified limits of that aircraft. Here's a little light rime ice that's formed on the leading edge of a Cessna 210 wing after flying through some of those clouds back there. And there the boot inflates, knocking most of the ice off. The boots usually operate in two stages, an inboard and then followed by an outboard boot. With a Goodyear style de-icing boot, once you inflate the boot, break the ice up, it typically flies over the top of the wing. However, in severe icing conditions, you might break up the ice on the leading edge of the wing, but ice remains behind the protected area and starts building up a ridge or a little bit of a wall. What's the hazard with airframe icing? It's not the weight of the ice so much, it is the aerodynamic drag or the disruption of airflow over the wing surface that is the hazard. Once you deform the airfoil shape of the wing with irregular icing, your stall speed goes way up, the angle of attack at which the aircraft stalls goes way down, and so you can easily stall the aircraft. Also, with this disruption of airflow over the wing, 
when it comes to a, a control surface like an aileron for example you can create some very erratic flight control problems with your aircraft if you disrupt that airflow well in front of the flight control so what's the big deal with freezing precipitation it's about the biggest hazard in dealing with icing conditions you folks that are living in texas understand uh, this very well you see these ice storms come through which just slather the side of your car with freezing precipitation to the point where you can't even open open the door to your car because it's just covered in a sheet of frozen precipitation frozen rain typically what causes this this phenomenon S large supercooled water droplets typically you'll have weather that has freezing cold air above the weather is precipitating in the form of snow it then hits a layer of warmer air below that freezing precipitation turns back into liquid form but it's super cooled that precipitation is liquid but it may very well be below freezing at or below freezing in order for that precipitation to refreeze it needs a nucleization event to refreeze it and that event is when that water that super cooled water droplet hits something if it hits your airframe it just sticks like snot all over the airframe not just the leading edge but right over the top of the wing top and bottoms of the wings right over the prop right over the windshields super cooled water drop icing can happen suddenly and surprisingly and you need to get out of that situation fast if you could just climb or descend a couple thousand feet upwards of three thousand feet you can typically get out of a super cooled icing event same thing for you guys in texas with your uh, ice storms that super cooled water droplet is falling out of the sky and not until it hits the side of your car it freezes instantly on impact you can see this sometimes have you ever had a water bottle in your car overnight and it's below freezing and you get in the car and you know it's well below freezing but you look at the water bottle and the water is still in liquid form and then you pick the water bottle up and start to take a drink out of it or shake it and the entire contents freeze that shaking of the water bottle is creates the nucleization event to start the ice crystal forming and then the entire water bottle freezes into basically one big ice crystal so the problem with freezing precipitation is that it can easily overwhelm the anti-icing or de-icing capability of an aircraft especially in critical phases of flight like takeoff or landing this is one of the many things investigators will be looking at as they look at these two recent crashes involving winter weather and pilot judgment and experience